Hello everyone, this is Peter from Drone Vibes Podcast and I'm here to talk to you a little more about the Phantom 4 camera. Uh, I've been playing with my Phantom 4 for about a week now, doing all kinds of tests and uh, most questions I've gotten from uh, our listeners and my colleagues was whether the camera is really different and is it better than the one on the Phantom 3 Professional. The Phantom 4 camera sports the same sensor that is found in a Phantom 3 Professional or GoPro cameras. It offers 12 megapixel resolution and up to 4K Ultra HD video recording. The 20mm, which is a 35mm format equivalent lens, offers 94 degree field of view and f2.8 fixed aperture, 100 to 3200 ISO range for video and 100 to 1600 range for photos. The available shutter speeds range from 8 seconds to 1 8000th of a second. The gimbal has been redesigned, uh, the dampening blocks are now inside of the body. They can still be accessed by removing this uh, cover, I suppose. The only thing now that is closed is the yaw motor and uh, the gimbal arm along with the camera. The camera is also supported along its tilt axis from both sides now that adds a bit to the stability. The lens design and the materials have changed and um, supposedly they're offering a slight reduction in the lens distortion and the aberration. I personally noticed the distortion to still be there, just a little different and uh, the images seem a bit crisper than from the Phantom 3 Professional. The tip of the lens body is threaded to accommodate the ND filters. I tested the unit with Polar Pro filters I had from my Phantom 3 and they fit perfectly. I really recommend using the ND filters for the 180 degree shutter to get your smooth videos. The shutter speed under the regular light conditions is pretty high and without an ND filter will give you this jittery feel in your videos. The camera offers two times zoom. Uh, you can simply pinch in on a screen to zoom in. Uh, the zoom does not work in 4K or at 120 frames per second or the slow-mo setting, but it will give you a nice two-time zoom for video from 2.7K down and for stills. And this may be helpful to capture more distant objects with the Phantom's wide lens. Uh, one can argue that you can record in 4K and then simply crop down and post, but recording in 2.7K at two times zoom loses less compression, so the resulting footage quality should be a little better. The two times digital zoom also works for still pictures. Interestingly, only the JPEG versions get saved uh, in zoomed in version at 4000 by 3000 pixels, and the DNG versions will get saved, but only as a full frame with, without reflecting the zoomed in crop. Just like on the Phantom 3 and the Inspire camera, the video is a bit too sharp, which causes some artifacting in parts of the image, uh, gives it this soupy feel to some uniform areas in the video. Uh, to get around this, I recommend using the custom settings and turning down the sharpness to negative 1 or negative 2. It's always easier to sharpen your videos in the post. Uh, I usually shoot in the D-Log color profile and dial down the sharpness, contrast and the saturation to about negative 2 and uh, then help or process the video in the post. The Phantom 4 also offers the ability to record at 120 frames per second in 1080p and 47 degree field of view, which is really a nice feature for slow motion effects. With this setting, the clips will only play back in slow motion by default. The camera also features a function called a 3D noise reduction, which has previously been only available to the X5 camera users. And uh, this function is on by default and it's supposed to help reduce the image noise. When compared to the DJI X3 camera on Phantom 3 Professional or the Inspire, the P4 camera offers marginally crisper image. I have not noticed any significant difference in dynamic range, uh, perhaps slightly more detail in shadows and less noise in low light. It also seems to set the white balance a bit differently from P3. For side-by-side -side comparison, we took the same pictures using the same settings on a Phantom 4 and a Phantom 3 Professional. And you can check out these photos in our Phantom 4 review at dronevibes.com and also download these raw files from the provided link and compare them for yourself. Uh, this folder also includes a few video clips in 4K in uh, either auto settings and D-Log with lower sharpness and uh, 120 frames per second slow motion. I was pretty impressed with how crisp the images from the Phantom 4 were. To answer the question whether it's worth it switching from Phantom 3 to Phantom 4, if you're more on the video side of things, uh, you'll probably appreciate some of the features on the Phantom 4, such as the active track and tap fly, uh, probably the slow motion effect too. 
but if you're more on the photography side of things, um, you'll probably have a hard time noticing the difference between the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4, especially the Phantom 3 Professional. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel, check out some of our other videos. You can also visit us at dronevibes.com for more drone news, reviews and how-tos. And also listen to our free Drone Vibes podcast on iTunes and Stitcher.